Hi, this is Mr. Mac. We're going to talk today about relations and functions. First of all, let's start with relation. A relation is defined to be any set of ordered pairs. Now we have here a set of ordered pairs, the ordered pair 1, 3, 2, 7, 4, 12, and 2, 13. Now if we were to look at this relation in what was, is called a mapping diagram, we would kind of put an oval to contain the numbers 1, 2, and 4. Sometimes we refer to this as the x's. Sometimes we call this the domain set. That's an important word. You'll need to remember that. And then we would have a second set of the y's, 3, 7, 12, 13. And we sometimes call this the range set. It's kind of important to know that particular word as well. Now, a mapping diagram would be when we show how the elements in the domain are matched with the elements in the range. See, we have 1, 3. We have 2 matched with 7. We have 4 matched with 12. And then we have 2 matched with 13. Now, any set of ordered pairs is a relation. But not all relations are functions. Functions are very important to us mathematicians. A function is a set of ordered pairs, or a relation, where no two distinct ordered pairs have the same first member. Now, if you'll look at our example here, uh, we do have two ordered pairs that have the same first member. 2, 7 and 2, 13 are not the same, uh, are, 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 are not the same ordered pairs, but they both have the same first member. They both have 2. That would make this relation not a function. Now, if you look down at the mapping diagram, you'll notice that there are two arrows emanating from the two. If you have a mapping diagram, if you see something like that, two or more arrows emanating from the same element in the domain set, then again, that's not a function. Now, if you were to draw a graph of this relation, uh, we would have the point one, three, let's put that about here. We would have two, seven, that might be here. We'd have 4, 12, that might be here. And we would have 2, 13, that would be here. Now, when you have a relation described by a graph, one of the ways to tell whether that relation is a function or not is to ask yourself, is there any place on this graph where a vertical line would connect two points of the graph. And you see, if we get to 2 here, this vertical line at x equals 2 connects the point 2, 7 with the point 2, 13. So we would say that this relation fails the vertical line test, so it is not a function. Now, there are many ways to tell someone what a relation or function is. You can do it as a set of ordered pairs. You can do it as a mapping diagram. You can do it as a graph. You could do it as a statement that tells how the x's or the domain elements relate to the range or the y elements. You could make a chart of x's matched with y's. Any of those are considered acceptable ways to tell what a function is, or what a relation is, or a function is. Now, a lot of times when we're dealing with functions, uh, we like to think of the idea that the domain set or the domain elements are independent. If you had, for example, 
independent, independent. I can do this, independent. There we go. The x values again, as we said, are considered the independent variable, and the range values are considered values of the dependent variable. For example, if you were to place a beaker of water over a Bunsen burner and measure the temperature, and then every two minutes measure the temperature again as the temperature of water increased, you would probably graph that using time along the x-axis and then temperature along the y-axis because you would conclude most likely that the temperature of the water depended upon the amount of time it had been over the Bunsen burner. That means that time would be the independent variable and temperature would be the dependent variable. That's an example of independent and dependent. We ordinarily put the independent variable on the horizontal axis, usually that's x, and we ordinarily put the dependent variable on the y-axis, usually that's on the vertical axis, usually that's y. Now, we want to talk about the um, uh, the way we delineate functions with equations. See, if you have a function like y is equal to 2x plus 3, this would be a, an equation in two variables that would generate ordered pairs. If you picked an x value and put it into the equation, you could solve for the y value that would be matched with it. For example, if you put 2 in for x, you would say, well, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, so 7. That means that this equation would generate the ordered pair 2, 7. You could put 5 in, and you would get 13. So we'd also have the ordered pair 5, 13, and so on. Now, mathematicians have decided that the expression 2x plus 3 inherently maps the number you put in, sometimes we call that the input, it's another name for x or the independent variable, and then the number that comes out uh, would be the output or y. And so instead of using a different variable y to be equal to 2x plus 3, sometimes they'll use a notation that looks something like this, f of x. Now, look at this carefully with me and realize, please, that this does not mean f times x. When you see this kind of notation, or f of x is equal to 2x plus 3, what that means is the function of x is 2x plus 3. So when we give you something like f of 4, what we're saying is put 4 in where x is, and figure out what value you get. So f of 4 would be 2 times 4 plus 3. Now 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So we would say f of 4 is 11. Now that would mean the ordered pair 4 comma 11 was an element of that function. But this notation right here, the f of x notation, is just kind of rich with meaning and it's a very efficient notation, and we'll be using that throughout the year. So you're, you need to get used to that. We do like to name functions with the letters F, G, and H, but we don't exclusively use those. I mean, if we have a function that gives us the area of a circle with respect to the radius, we might call it A of R. A of R turns out to be pi R squared. So this is a function of area with respect to the radius. So a of r is pi r squared, for example. This would be another example of functional notation. And you'll be seeing that a lot. Now, we ask ourselves also about a couple of other things with functions. Is a function one-to-one? -one Is 
is it on to is it discrete or continuous so let's take these one at a time first of all a one to one if you have a graph of some function you might ask yourself is it one to one now a one to one function is one where every y value has only one x value see for it to be a function itself every x value has to have only one y value and if you recall one of the ways we decided whether something was a function was we used a vertical line if a vertical line touches the graph in more than one spot or connects any two po uh, points of the graph anywhere along the graph then it isn't a function well in this particular case it is a function now if we if we want every y value to have exactly one x value one of the ways we can do that is ask, uh, is use what is called a horizontal line test. I'm having a little trouble with my horizontal line here. There we go. Um, now notice when I bring the horizontal line up to here, it actually touches the graph in three spots. Now that means that it has it is not one to one because uh, let's imagine this is a height of three. Maybe one three is on the graph and let's make this 4 here 4 3 is on the graph and 7 3 is also on the graph so we have one y value 3 that has more than one x value the y value of 3 has the x value of 1 it has the x value of 4 and it has the x value of 7 so to test whether a graph or a function is one to one what we do is we use a horizontal line test if a horizontal line can touch the graph in more than one point at a time, then it is not one-to-one. -one. On to, on to, on to, right? Uh, we'll get rid of that. Okay, now, if you have a graph, and let's say it starts up here, and it goes down like this and keeps on going. We would say that this graph is onto the real numbers because every y, every y, no matter where you go with y, will have an x. So if every y has an x, then the graph is onto or the function is onto. So if you an example of a function that is not onto the real numbers, for example, if you had what you've probably learned to call a parabola, notice there is no x where y is negative three. See, the graph comes down below the axis axis a little bit and then goes back up, and they'll keep going in this particular particular direction. So there's no x number that you can give me that would have a y value of negative 3. Since, no, there's, since there's no x for negative 3, we say that this graph is not on 2. Discrete versus continuous. Well, now continuous is a pretty obvious concept. If you have a graph that's continuous, what that means is there is a smooth curve or a straight line that describes the graph. It's connected. It is continuous. Now, a graph that is not connected or continuous would be one that would uh, something like um, if you were talking about how many pizzas you could order um, from Domino's or something like that, you could order one pizza or two pizzas or three pizzas, but you wouldn't order uh, the square root of two pizzas. In other words, the points of the graph would be disconnected, and something like this would be considered 
a discrete graph. So when you look at functions, if the points in between the points you're using to uh, make the curve also have meaning, or in other words, if you can connect the graph and the connections have meaning, then we say it's continuous. If the points in between don't make any sense, then we would only plot the points and that would be a discrete graph. And we're done. Done.